Hi, everybody. I think we're, I think we're live. Are we live? We're live. Let's assume we're live. Mm -hmm. uh, so hi and welcome everybody to our webinar series, Navigating the Unknown. And I hope everyone is taking good care, staying in hopefully for now and feeling as healthy as possible. Uh, I'm very honored to be doing this with the APA LA. I was asked and I was excited because this is a group I strongly believe in. It's made or created by photographers for photographers and it's the support and the networking and the resource of community that we all need a lot right now. So let us begin. Uh, we'll always start, we always will have a board member of the APA LA and today it's Hannah Benet, LA photographer as well. And we'll always have a guest and today's Michael Horta, photog uh, photographer, sorry, Michael, producer uh -huh. of MJ68. And uh, let's see, I guess, Hannah? Hey everyone, um, I'm Hannah. I've been on the board since 2016 and we're super excited to be doing this collaboration with you, Andrea. Um, we're, we have like such a great conversation ahead today and we really hope that this keeps everyone motivated during this time. And yeah, take it away. All right, awesome. So um, just so you know, Hannah is going to be checking our questions that come in. Keep the questions coming. I don't know if we'll get to all of them today, but keep them coming in. Um, so Michael, let me introduce you. I've known Michael no. for quite a while. He is the real deal, let me tell you, as a producer. Uh, Michael, your clients include Speedo, HBO, Ritz-Carlton, L'Oreal, Nissan, Lexus, all, Toyota, all the car clients as well. And um, so I guess that's it. Hi, Michael. Hello. Thank you for having me. This is really exciting. This is uh, certainly a topic that has been hot in our office and we've been talking a lot about it. I think we're all really eager to get back to work and to understand, you know, what that's going to look like. And um, I think there are definitely um, a lot of challenges that we have to address and face. But I also think that there's uh, a lot of opportunity. So we're really excited in this new era to, uh, to redefine our industry and, and really uh, and look at it more closely and, and make it better. And I think this is a perfect time. So we're excited Absolutely. to be here. Thank you. I love your attitude. And I feel the same because, of course, there's a lot going on for us to figure out together. Mm -hmm. And something about this time could give us some hope, more hope. Yes. So let's get into these questions. The first is really the general question about all the safety precautions and what's going on and insurance questions. So please dive in, Michael, and tell us what, what you're thinking right now. Yeah, so what, what we're working on right now at MJ68, and we're going to have this, we're going to make this available to anybody who wants it in the industry, we'll have it um, on the APA's website, but we're working on uh, a guidebook uh, for set health protocol, essentially. And there's been a lot of information. We've been talking with um, people all over the industry, from the film industry to the print industry, um, you know, friends at major studios. And we've been getting a lot of lists. We've been seeing all kinds of ideas. Um, a lot of them are really wordy and, and long. And so we're trying to consolidate the information and just get it into a simple form that can be something anybody can implement, not just a big production company, but even an individual photographer. If they were doing their own shoot, they could look at something like this and say, these are things that I need to consider. Um, so, you know, to start out with your question, I think, you know, a lot of people are are asking about insurance and uh, you know, by no means am I the, the, the word on insurance. I'm definitely an insured production company. We work with Tom Pickard, one of the best in the industry. But as of now, what we're hearing from them and the providers is that viruses are not anything that's covered as part of insurance. So that's something to consider. And um, as a result of that, we're, you know, until there is some kind of a vaccine or a way that we can you know, assure people's safety 100%, there's going to be need, there's going to be a need for some kind of a waiver that people will need to sign on set, that they understand that the risk that they're taking coming on set. And I think that's where our book and our guidelines come in is like, we are, you know, with presenting that to somebody saying, here, you need to sign this waiver. 
they need to feel sure that what they're coming to, the, the location, the set, the studio, has been really thoughtfully, uh, you know, procured. Like the, all, everything you need is there, and and that um, all the steps for hygiene are there. So that's what we're working on. We're really working on that, and I think we're in a good place with it. Um, I think it's going to keep evolving because as we get into shooting and shoots, we're going to learn like, oh wow, wait, this is a stumbling block. We need to redefine this. Um, Michael, I have one quick question on the yeah. Oh, yeah. I was going to ask, uh, okay. with regards to a waiver, who would be responsible for drafting that? Would we need to hire a lawyer to do that? Or is that something a photographer can write on their own? So, yeah, you know, um, we're, we're definitely going to go the legal route to do that as a, as a production company. But it's definitely a, a document, again, that we would be happy to share with anybody. You know, the idea behind this is us coming together as a community and sharing our resources and just helping one another there's nothing you know proprietary about it you know it's just standard legal um jargon you know in regards to releasing and we'll definitely make those available to anybody that wants it great so we'll get that through the apa when when you have it yeah um i was recently asked uh if my photographers had workers comp by themselves does that you think cover i was wondering if they asked me that because of this pandemic does right. that? Yeah. No, it does not actually. Mm -hmm. So worker, workers comp will cover things that happen on set injuries, you know, work related injuries, things like that, but it doesn't cover viruses. And I think that's the thing to understand. So, um, you know, in the, in the beginning of getting back to production, that's the most important thing. Anybody that's deciding to come to set needs to understand that there is some element of risk. We can, we can clean, we can wear our personal protection, we can distance, we can create a footprint on set that allows us not to be in such close contact when possible, but there will always be a risk in gathering. So, um, you know, that's just the state of affairs, but I feel really confident that we can do it. You know, I, I, I we've been, had the fortune of having a construction project going on right next to our office. And I walk the dogs there every day and I see these guys going in and I see their protocol and their signs on the wall and how they're entering and, who's checking them. And that's really what inspired me. I started seeing that very early on back in March. And I thought, well, there you go. There's a crew, you know, we're crews. We, we just have to fall in line and do that. And I, I, I feel like we can. Our work may be a little different in time because there are moments where we need to be really close. But, um, I, you know, I, I think there's definitely solutions for that. I agree, Michael. There, there are for sure solutions. I do a lot of healthcare photography. And so when I'm photographing people in hospitals, we're actually already um, taking those steps and wearing masks and sanitizing our hands all the time. So it's definitely something that we can start applying to all of our shoots. Right. And I think, you know, the, the, an important thing to think about too is, is our work day. You know, our work day is really going to change. Um, we have a page in our, in our guidebook about, um, you know, suggestions for our clients and agents uh, and agencies and, and, uh, you know, what we can accomplish in a 10 hour day is gonna change quite dramatically um, in the beginning days of this. Um, what we're implementing on, on our sets is going to be a, a check-in station. Um, we are working with some um, uh, partners in the industry, uh, Innovative, who makes the camera carts and those kinds of things. They're actually working on a COVID uh, check-in station uh, that will be available. I'm sure it'll be available to own or rent or you know, all those things, but it, it could be really anything. It's really just about having a place where people arrive to on set. Um, a new role that we feel needs to be on all these sets is a set medic when we have a large crew. Um, I think that's something that most clients will probably really understand the need for that. And uh, we see our check-in process as being uh, meeting with a medic, having a temperature check, filling out a health questionnaire and signing your waiver. And hopefully we can do some of these things in advance before they arrive at set so we can keep that check-in um, tight. But you can imagine if you have 20 people and it takes three minutes per person to do that, how long is it before you're even in and now setting up to do your shoot? You can see what happens to your shoot day. So yeah, that, that is something that concerns me as the rep, like keeping us within our time frame. You had mentioned 10 hours, but I know we often shoot 14 hours. Do you think that's going to change? You know, I, 
I, I think it's important for it to, and I would hope it would. That's going to be our recommendation. I think what we're dealing with is, you know, we're, we're having a health crisis at the moment. And it's not the time for us to, like, push hours and wear people out and, and lower their immune systems. We all know when we're fatigued, your immune system goes down. And right now what we need is healthy people. So I think, you know, most sensible people will, will, will think about that and, and say, okay, we get it. Yeah, we, we can't do this. You know, we can't have a 14-hour day and have four of them back to back you know, right. that, that's just not healthy I, at this point. I was also thinking, you know, on a set in the moment, it's so intense and everybody is just so focused on getting those shots done, whip them out. What if people, I can't, kind of can't imagine people sticking with the protocol. Right. And how are the, you, or how should a photographer without a producer keep it together for what we need to do right now? So, you know, if, if your production is big enough to warrant having uh, a set medic, then that person's role after they check them in would be to monitor the set. Um, monitor the set and make sure that the protocols are happening, the, 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 the timing is happening for cleanliness and the distance is happening. If your shoot is smaller, let's say you don't have a production company or a producer, um, I think this can really easily be solved by just having someone in that role. If you have, you know, most photographers will know trusted people that they work with, a trusted PA, for example, anybody who's responsible that could be out of the production needs in terms of what's going on in the shoot and really be able to stand back and look at the set and monitor things and make sure that things are getting clean. Because everything we're doing there is about touching, you know, we're touching, we're grabbing. So we're really uh, starting to outline like every department will handle their own thing and not touch other people's things. And then there will be a cleaning cycle that goes through that. Um, what if people though are not doing it? Like the ditch check takes his ma their mask off or even the photographer. What do, how do we control this? Uh, and I don't know if there's an answer to this, depends on personalities, but. Yeah, I think, you know, it's just really about communication, you know, and I, I think we have to make sure that we're inviting people on set that um, are, you know, are open to it and, and want to participate, you know, and that's a conversation we should have before we put our crew together, you know, and, and I, I would want to be reminded, you know, if, I, if my mask isn't on properly or I'm getting too close, I would hope that somebody would tell me so I could get in line. It's taken me, I'm sure like everybody, a minute to kind of get through this idea of uh, how to do it every day, you know, and, and when to do it and where to have it and, you know, how to place it on. So yeah. I think crew's going to be open to it. We, you know, we're caring people. We're all artists. That's what we do. So I, I think on all the sets I've been on, you know, the, a very interesting moment, and I, I shared this with you earlier when we talked, all of our, all of our crews started and ended every day hugging. We just were all like, these are good friends and family and people that we work with all the time. And we all started our day that way. And that's the thing I'm going to miss the most until we have a vaccine is hugging these beautiful people. But, um, but that tells you something about who we're inviting. That's, that's the culture already. It's that intimate and close. And these are people we know. And I think that, that um, you know, I, I don't see that being a problem. I think people are going to really uh, step up to it. So we can keep working too. We all need to work. That's the other thing. I, you know, we need to get back to work. So whatever right. it takes, whatever it takes, you know, and, and you can look at the, the nation and you can say, wow, look at what we did. I mean, of course, not everybody, but you can say, wow, an entire nation shut down <laughs> because we care about this, you know, this, and, and we're concerned about this threat. So but like in practicality, my, what if the photographer shows up and have, has a fever? And I'm sorry if there's technical difficulties right now. My, my internet's a bit slow. No, I can hear you well. I can okay. hear you well. Yeah, yeah. That's a very good question. And, and, and that, those are things that um, we still need to flesh out a little bit about what happens uh, when you get into that health situation and how does that work? And how does there, you know, if, if the shoot were to fall apart for a health, uh, a health reason, how does that get resolved? I don't have the answers for that at this moment. You know, that's a, that's a very good question. Um, we're hoping um, that, our, you know, our steps are right up to the shoot um, to be in contact with everybody, not just a call sheet going out saying, hey, come tomorrow. 
you know, but having somebody on our team call every single person on that list and say, how are you? How are you feeling? You know, how, how are, you, are you feeling up for it tomorrow? You know, and hopefully by checking in at least 24 hours in advance, hopefully there's not a big turn within the course of, a, you know, an evening. Um, it certainly could happen, but. Do you, do you, are you going to take people's uh, temperature when they come in? Do you see that happening? I do. You know, I think, I, I think we all know that it's like there's, you know, there's been increased uh, discussion about being, having a lot of risk with people that are asymptomatic. Um, and so I'm not, you know, certain exactly what the temperature check does, but I think it's a good thing. It, it really, it, it, it's some form of information that we can gather quickly and that we, when we arrive on set and right. understand, you know. I wonder if that's going to be a standard procedure. It will be for us. It will yeah. be for us until Good. there's a vaccine, for sure. So, and Michael, do yeah. you do you know if uh, OSHA is planning to set any legal compliance requirements for us? Yeah, yeah. There's a lot. Not specifically. I haven't seen anything specifically for the photography community, mm -hmm. but there are definitely um, uh, there's definitely a lot of OSHA information going on. And in the document that I'll share, we've included all those links, and you can click quickly uh, click and get to those sites. If you haven't looked already, but they're they're definitely updating that, and I think we're all in the same boat, just compiling the information. Great. I I'm wondering how shoots are going to look different in the near future. Mm -hmm. And I had the situation where uh, my studio photographer he's getting a little busy, which is wonderful. One client direct said, "Well, you can have some crew," and we were like, "No." And then another client direct said, you cannot have any crew. So it, there, there seems like there's this not clear state of clients. You right. know, are, everyone's a little different. Are you talking about now or after the lockdown is lifted? Right now. Right now. Yeah, I, you know, personally for, for us, I, we would err on the side of, you know, right now, I think if shoots are happening, there, there are things that are happening with people that are working on their own or they are staying at home with uh, a partner or group or people that have been together solely and I, I feel like those people could work and work in their own environments um, but I, I do agree that it's not time and especially now we're so close you know we're so close it's like weeks away I mean in weeks away they're going to lift it and then we're going to start figuring out how we can do it so I think until but I, then but the confusing room, part for me was that the clients aren't with us. There's like no standard for what clients are saying, this is how we're working right now. Right. Puts and us in a weird position when our clients are not following the same methods. Right, and that's the, I think that's why I'm excited to be here because I think that we all have to come together, all the reps, all the producers, all the photographers, we have to start to discuss and talk about what we want so we're all saying the same thing. So when the clients call, you know, the first line in is usually the reps if it's not directly to a photographer. And those reps are going to be able to now articulate the new world we're living in and, and help them understand that, like, you're going to see different things. You're going to see different things on your estimates that you haven't seen before. Um, you know, with, with, a large, with a larger crew, um, we are going to implement hand washing stations. We found them. We sourced them. They can easily be rented. They could be on set. So we're not clogging up bathrooms. Uh, that are necessary to, just for hand washing, and that hand washing can happen more frequently on set. Right. So these are new; these are new items. You start to think about the set medic, and start to think about hand washing. You start to think about providing masks, gloves, hand sanitizers everywhere, face shields for hair and makeup people, wardrobe people. All of that has to be considered, and and how that's going to happen. How many people at a time a hair and makeup person can work on, you know, and and those things are going to slow slow things down tremendously. So I think in that we have to articulate that as we're budgeting, you can see with everything I'm describing, how that shrinks the amount of actual shoot time because there's so much more prep time. So, yeah. uh, you know, that's something that we're going to have to have to think about. And I hope clients understand they might get less than they did before and have to pay more. That's it's well, going to be yeah, and I, yeah. you know, I think there's solutions, you know, there's, there's, we were definitely, um, you know, prior, prior to, to this lockdown and this medical event, 
um, we were going at an incredible pace in production. I can tell you from you know our, our perspective, just working with many different types of photographers, it was nonstop. And the, and the ask was, was getting, it was more and more and more and more in a, you know, in, in a day. 15 in a day, no, 30 in a day, no, 35. How can we, you know, what can we cram into a day? And, and I think, you know, we're, we're all eager to deliver as best as we can. We want to be there for our clients. But I think now is the time that we have to really evaluate what we're doing and, and kind of stand together for a healthy situation, you know, that we can, hours that we can work in and make sure we're maintaining this protocol. Um, yeah. You know, and to provide safety, really, on set. Yeah, not endangering anybody. Right. I mean, I do wonder legally what's going to happen in the future. Like, who's going to be legally responsible? Are people going to start getting sued for getting sick? You know? Well, no, that, that's what the release is about. So when, once somebody signs a release, everybody's going to sign it. Client, agency, talent, everybody's going to be on the same page with that. That that portion of it is off the table. So if you, know, I, if you if you fall and get injured, of course, you, you know, production's responsible or whoever's insuring is responsible. Although I was listening to the business talk on the APA mm -hmm. webinar from this week, and that came up and someone was saying, even if we have those releases, maybe people are going to get sued. Like this could become a whole other situation for us. And as right. photographers with their own business, that's a lot to figure out, a lot to track. Right. Right. Well, you know, that's where that's where we can come in too. you know, working with a producer or a production company can be that buffer, you know, so that's that that's a place that we can come in and, and, and be that middle. But so I mean, not but but so many jobs can't afford you. So many photographers are in genres right. that don't have uh, producers. So I, I feel like we're not yet at that stage of figuring out what the answers are, but we're right. all diving in right now to figure it out together, which I love. Yes. Yes. I, I wanted to ask you, are, is the phone ringing right now? How, what's happening right now for you? Yeah, surprisingly, it is. It's really interesting. Well, we had, we had one project going on right before, uh, right before the, the lockdown happened. And um, it was really a, a, a really great creative team who was, uh, you know, who, who decided, we decided collectively after speaking, like, let's, let's just keep going. Let's push through. We've gotten this far. So we were able to just, you know, through the, through the internet and everybody staying at home, kind of flush out our locations and our brief and our shot list um, and all of those things. We actually even added to our shot list uh, an additional day because there's some other assets we want to gather. So I was, I was pretty shocked about that. And then Andrea, you and I have gotten a few calls, which has mm -hmm. been you know, really great. And, and I think, um, you know, the interesting question on those calls that came in was exactly this topic. Okay, we want to do this. We want to go in a studio. How's that going to work? And this is coming from big brands that we're asking you and I, how's this going to work? You know, and that's why it became really uh, important for us to get this going. It's, it's, I don't know, Hannah, you tell me too. It's confusing. How do we react right now? Yeah, it's as it's, if we have the answers and clients are asking us. It's, you know, it's a complicated situation. It's like on one hand, I want to shoot everything, but on the other hand, I want to like, like stay safe and I don't want to break any laws. Um, so it's, you know, it's yeah. controversial and complicated. And I think, I think the best thing to do is to stay safe. But as we were discussing, there are a lot of really creative solutions that we could come up with at home. Like I, yes. for example, have been shooting a lot of stock stuff. You know, I've convinced yes. some of my roommates to sanitize random surfaces throughout the house. And I've, they're basically hand models now. And so that's, uh -huh. that's one thing I'm doing, but I mean, there's yeah. a lot. That of is so true. We have to get as creative right now as possible. Like Michael, are you seeing creative ways of photographers being very proactive to, to, to get work right now? Yeah, I think it's really about, you know, it's about storytelling and, and, and you know, uh, showing your creativity. We've been, we were so busy prior to this with so many things going on that people, I, I often heard photographers saying, oh gosh, I need to do this and I don't have the time. I got to update my website. I don't have the time. You know, me included, you know, I desperately yeah. need to do that. And that's what we're working on now, you know, and I think that this is a time to really get in there. And if you're a photographer, you know, to, 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 uh, 
to do some of your own personal projects now and, and do them in your own space. And some of those images are like my favorite. I, you know, I, I like them more than commercial images, you know, stuff just that, you know, I've, I've seen photographers have take beautiful pictures of, of children in, in a moment, you know, and those things are amazing. It's their own kids in their own backyard. And, and, and that, yeah. really, I, I think that really, uh, you see those things rolling through social media and, and, or maybe their Insta page for their photography and, and uh, it connects you with them. So keep yeah. it going, you know, keep it going. I, I love seeing all of that. It's great. You were talking about pod cultures. Yes. I love that name. Is that the official name? Yeah, that's what, you know, we were, we were talking to some, uh, we got a really interesting li list from Lionsgate. Um, and uh, it was interesting. I always like to look at what the film industry is doing in our community because they, you know, the film industry and television, it's a very organized, very structured, uh, you know, environment. And they have a lot of rules and regulations on any given day, even before COVID-19. So I always look to see like what's going on, you know, how can we, how can we bring that into our photo world? And, uh, and yeah, they were talking about pod culture, you know, they were talking about um, setting up, uh, you know, groups of people, uh, groups of crews that would stay together, essentially. And so they wouldn't, you know, be breaking off if they had enough work and could continue to work together, stay in that pod and, and, and not intermix it so much in the beginning. And that's one way that, you know, we can help. It's certainly not possible for everybody. A lot of us work with different people, especially on crew. But um, when possible, I think it's I, I think it's an interesting idea. Yeah, um, I I I know budgets. Oh, there's always this thing about for a couple of years now, more content, less budget, and right. it's like, how are these two going to meet right now? How how are we going to shoot with less budget right now? Well, I think. I think we can shoot with any budget, really. It's just the amount of content that we're gonna be able to produce within a given time. So we just have to look at whatever the budgets are and we just have to get creative on how we can accomplish those things. I think, um, you know, some of the things I was seeing before, I, I, I had um, some clients, uh, you know, initially coming out with their first ask and you could see things like, we want 18 talent and you're like, okay 18 talent but 18 talent with wardrobe and talent fees and all of that you know I, I think a lot of us know where that goes in the budget it's a huge chunk so how can we do that how can we pare that down and i think it's about getting creative about how we can we can hone in these you know hone in the production to meet their needs obviously they're they're also in the same situation we are i think money is going to be uh you know a concern for everybody um but it's just about getting creative on how we can do it I was saying before about my studio photographer, Toby, I can say that, uh, he, how we did it, how he did it, his wife was his hand model and his wife. Right. And then through retouching, it, the hand looks quite good. So it's like, yeah, the creative time is to have to figure out the budget issues and how to do exactly. it right now. Right. We yeah. did a lot. We did a lot of, um, you know, in the early days of our company, we did a lot of um, uh, backlight shoots in the automotive world. Um, we had a, a, a brand that pretty exclusively, that's all we were doing. And it was really great because we had so much fun. We were able to actually like travel more around. And Wait, you said go, backlight? Uh, backplate. So back plates. Back, yeah, yeah, so just shooting, shooting backgrounds, and then they were doing CG work later, and that's a really safe environment because sometimes we would do those entire projects with just three people, four people, and it gave us so much freedom, you know. And so I think there's an interesting, um, there's an interesting idea there, even outside of automotive, is um, clients maybe starting to let creatives be more creative. And, and do things on their own and not having to have so much, uh, so many people uh, there on set in the early days, you know, giving them an assignment and saying, okay, well, we, we like their work. We like what they do. Uh, let's, you know, let's send them the product and let's have them do it. And also remote, remote viewing is another one too. Um, our, our, a lot of digital techs we've been talking to um, have set up remote viewing and uh, they're able to have live feeds where, where, uh, People can view everything remotely, the, the approvals of clothes, props, all That of came up on the Biz Talk APA, again, 
this morning yeah. that I watched this morning. Uh, mm. And the photographer talked about having different, like a uh, uh, iPad and a phone, different cameras on himself. And he was working with a Digitech. You should watch that instead of hearing what I'm saying. But, uh, yeah, and the Digitech could even shoot for him while he was lighting something. Right. Through, and they were not in the same room. Amazing. Yeah. That's, good. That's incredible. I know. I feel like there's more of a human time happening because Absolutely. of all our health concerns and our heart. And even for me as, a, as marketing, as a rep, we're, we're so human right now in such a, a way that I haven't seen before. And I'm wondering how that's going to affect things like in our business. What do you, what, I, I have you noticed that? Yeah, I have. And I think it's going to help us actually quite a bit. You know, there's this idea, everybody's like, well, what will the clients understand? And if I really break it down and I think of like the clients that I've worked with um, in the last five years, um, their moms, their dads, their aunts, they're, they're, they're all these, you know, they have families, they live lives. They're a lot of, a lot of really wonderful people. And they're, we're all going through this together. So I, I really want to believe that, that there's going to be, uh, there's going to be a lot of respect and compassion for our level of care. But I think in order to, to get this going and invite them back to, to produce, we're going to need to make sure that we show that we care about it enough to, to implement all of this and that we're going to stand behind it and not try to cut corners because cutting corners could mean someone's life, you know, and that's really what we have to remember. It's, it, it's easy when we go outside and, you know, you look at the beach last week and, you know, everyone's like, all right, let's go to the beach, you know, but you have to remember that in, in one instance, it could be somebody's life that's at risk. So, these, these things we're going to do on set are, are things that are going to be uh, representative of who we are, but also representative of our, of our client's brand. You know, they, they yeah. stand, I, we work with a lot of brands who have been, who have been talking about uh, not necessarily COVID, but prior to uh, going green and having all, all the sets go green. And, and we're, we've been working on that now um, quite extensively and it's really trying to analyze it a little bit more. And that's the reset. I think, you know, we, we had a, we had a three month now, we're going to have a three month reset to think about planet earth. And it's, it's not just a, a, a health crisis. It's kind of a, kind of a humanitarian crisis, really. Like, what are we doing? You know, you can look at the entire way we're doing all of those things and brands. Now they want to, they're going to have new stories to tell new stories to tell about how their uh, what their practices are and how things are made and that things are made responsibly and that we're, able to recycle these things and these things are sourced responsibly and all, all of that and that's where we're going to yeah. come in we're going to we're going to come in and make those stories from them so together you know to do that we have to be doing it first on set you know that same that's that same care we have to give it on set you know so. i see that a lot of, of course on the ads right now they're yeah. all so heartfelt and we care too and we're a brand that you can believe in and yeah. Uh, it gives me hope that they're going to allow us to shoot that way. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But it's going to be about us coming together. Again, I just want to remind everybody that is like, we all have to do it on whatever level. So even if you're not a shooter that has a big production company behind you and you're doing that, use these guidelines, you know, and, 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 uh, and think about them and figure out a way you can implement them on your small set, even if it's four people only. You know, you might not need to hire a set medic or have the budget for a set of four people, but there's certainly, you could certainly look at this list and say, okay, I know how to take care of these people that I'm around and how we can work together. Um, you know, food is going to be really different for a while. You know, catering, it's going to be staggered. People are not, we're not all going to be sitting at a table together, right? We have to socially distance. How are we going to put food. this big spoon in and take our stuff? Yeah, we so we're looking. That. No, we're not doing that anymore. So for for a while, but I think um, we've been talking to all of our caterers, and uh, set, set caterers are are coming up with really amazing solutions from um, box lunches that are already packaged and meals, breakfast and lunches, things that are completely sealed, utensils that are completely sealed and arrived, pretty much like the takeout that most of us have had occasionally here and there during it. And, you know, in terms of like buffet things, we, we think that there's going to be one person with gloves and a mask and a shield and no one will be 
going down the line serving themselves you know they'll yeah. be coming through and saying what they want they'll be served and you know it's just it's going to be different but i think meals will also be staggered that's another thing we're going to need to do in terms of space on a larger on a larger set you know obviously which, if you have which will also course, slow it down which will also slow it down but we can prepare for that in, in kind of rethinking our workflow you know who can stay how can we stagger and still shoot we often do that um on a lot of my yeah. films, you know, we'll have, yeah. we'll have a moment where someone's like, no, no, the light is great right now. Just give me me and this person, everybody else. Everybody, you go eat. Go break. You go yeah. eat. We're going to yeah. grab this, you know, and then we come back. So we've been doing that already. I think now we're going to really kind of cycle it through as part of our always. Right. I have to keep remembering to look at my questions. So <laughs> um, are there ways photographers can be proactive right now to do something to get jobs in the near future? I guess we did answer that. Yeah, I you know keep yeah keep, keep shooting. <laughs> what advice do you have in becoming an effective leader in our industry? Hmm. That's a good As question. a photographer, there are certain types of photographers who are uh, maybe not giving as much of their ideas to everything. You know, the ones that I work with consistently or repetitively. We keep getting asked back to shoot things. The things that I, that the, the one thing that really stands out for me is that they are um, problem solvers. I don't know, I don't, I don't know if problem is the right word, but like they, they can find creative answers to something that the client or the agency is trying to figure out. And within that, it, it instills a lot of confidence in that client. And that client inevitably will come back again and say, yeah, this is a big one. It's important. I've got a really big project. I'm not messing around. Give me so and so. You know. So they need the, them. They need them, and those are. Mm -hmm. I think to to be leading as you know, leading in that industry, it's about being, becoming that person, and be and not just uh, not just asking them for what they need and and saying here, but that actually bringing something to the table and and figuring out how to make the project blossom even further. Because oftentimes they have a really great creative idea on their side and then the client has a request on their side, but the photographer can really bring something to it that maybe, you know, hadn't been thought about. So yeah, that would be my, and, and, and same for production, you know, same for producers, same for anybody in the industry that's not on the side of shooting, you know, it's about bringing ideas. I, I personally like hire assistants uh, on our set that contribute, you know, that, that we have assistants on our set that'll, you know, come and say, hey, you know, a light back here, <laughs> really might change something and you know good photographers will say yeah you know what you're right let's try it let's look at that let's see what that's about so you know those kinds of crews and those kinds of people i i think go a long way whether it's stylists or hair and makeup people yeah and i think a lot of these roles are gonna everything's gonna shift a little bit right now yeah you know like even prop stylists are gonna be like uh they're not wearing their mask over there. Put your mask up, and everybody's gonna, I feel, gonna jump in. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be a team effort for sure. I think we'll even yeah, have somebody effort. that that looks over this, but I I think that we're all gonna we're all gonna feel the need to jump in because if we do it, we get to keep working. So that, I mean, you know, there there is the, the the compassion and the health motivation for sure, and then there's also the really other big concern is like we need to keep working <laughs> all of it and i so, bet i bet um clients will notice this about who's shooting in a way that we can trust so we're not going to get sued potentially in the future exactly. we want to stick with the regulations which production teams which photographers have this like if they go on a shoot and the photographer is not dealing with this right wow I, right i'd be afraid as a client yes and there's, you know, there's all sizes of this. So I think that there's, uh, you know, something to consider. Oftentimes people think of us as being a, a production company that does really big productions and we do quite a, quite a bit, but we also have um, freelance uh, producers that work with us um, that do very small shoots, Teen Vogue uh, shoot, you know, with just one celebrity um, or, or other, you know, uh, other scale projects from big to small, but, um, and they also uh, come in with, with MJ68 behind them and can be that person. So I, I think I should, yeah. I really want to mention that, like, don't, 
don't be shy about having a producer if you think it's a budgetary thing. The most important thing to do is reach out and just see like what we can do for you. We don't, you, you don't have to have the whole thing just to have that safety. Especially right now. Like Especially I've right always now. enjoyed when we can use a producer, but right now, really yep. try if you can. Yeah. And talk to Michael, because you're very, you know, maybe you can help in another way, maybe not be on set, but maybe just help get it together. You're open yeah. to things. Yeah, it's a big part of our mission right now. We're definitely open to hearing from anybody and, and uh, full of advice and, you know, anything we can share. We just really want to. I just realized the time. It. So we we're a little over time already. So let's, I got to go quickly here. Um, yeah. This kind of feels to me like 2008. And a lot of people are saying that. Mm -hmm. um, don't you think, and how do you, how do you, how do you feel a little hopeful right now? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll make this as short as I can, but I know a little aside, a little aside. So 2008 was shortly after uh, our production company really got into full force with automotive and all of that, which is about 2006-ish, the automotive really became big. And um, <clears throat> so we were growing and growing and super excited. And then 2008 came, we weren't a big player yet in the, in the scene and the economy crashed and my phone didn't ring for a year whole year and I was not prepared I just thought like another job coming we're going to keep going this is going to be great um and uh and then you know what it was we just we just shifted and we found other ways of working um I actually ended up producing for a production designer in New York and started uh managing uh set construction and set design uh for shows like HBO and all these so, other so in a sense you got creative with your position as well just like right. we're saying, photographers can get a little right. more creative right now. What's my skill set? How can I apply that mm -hmm. to, to, to doing other types of producing? Who needs my organization? And I found a way to do it. And it, you know, the interesting thing was is that that year that I ended up shifting into that is so valuable now that I look back upon it because I had this year of like living in the art department and, yeah. and soaking it yeah. up. And now I come onto set and I think, I think about the art department. I think Getting about a little different view. Yeah, yeah, so it's all the all the pieces. So I say to you know for photographers too, just you know look look everywhere, and and we're all going to need to adapt and adjust for a little while. But um, with it, there's going to be a lot of opportunity. I'm certain of it. I also feel as a rep that if the book is strong enough, if your portfolio, if your website, your images are strong enough, you will rise to the top. That's the whole concern right now: is get your book where it has to be, and use this time to figure out how am I gonna get my book better? Start planning it, start thinking what tests, start researching, educate yourself. Who are the photographers who are making it? Why really kind of be, have an objective eye? What's good? Like really teach yourself. That's a big topic to throw in here. But. Absolutely, I have a, I know a, um, a, a set, um, set designer who works uh, for West Elm and um, consistently. And um, he, uh, he's been in his apartment in New York City in, on lockdown and just creating art and creating sets and creating all kinds of things in miniature and uh, super inspiring. And, and everybody's following along and, 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 and watching what he's doing and it's kind of keeping him in their minds and, uh, you know, yeah. keeping his creative voice alive. So that's, I think, an important thing to be doing right now is not to just disappear. That's, I love that term, creative voice. Like, let's all get our creative voice. And I mean, look at us, look what, look what I'm doing right now. Look what you guys are doing right I now. I, know. I never want to be This was not what I thought I'd be doing. <laughs> but I'm thrilled, it's my creative voice. I'm getting to put my thoughts and my perspective onto how to do this better and what, anyway. Well, you're starting the conversation and that's why we thank you, Andrea, really. This is the most important thing. I, I never want to be in front of the camera. It's like, I, I, I was so nervous when we started this thing. And, I didn't know and, that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hate it, I hate it. But uh, most people know me know that. But, but I, you know, I, I feel the importance of it and I'm so happy that you organized this with the APA and that Patty um, in, invited us to, to be part of her forum. And, um, you know, I'll come back anytime yeah. if you guys want to discuss this further. Yeah, because um, we, we really are running out of time, which is crazy. Do we have any other quick questions, Hannah, that you see that we have to? We have a ton of audience questions. So Anything quick? Um, yeah. Uh, okay. One that I thought was really interesting was um, 
how do we simultaneously have a green set while also having a healthy set where we're using more plastic and everything has its own package now to meet these new safety requirements? Right, that's a very good one. I think that, um, you know, in terms of food, uh, food's gonna come in, in packaging that the food vendor is gonna source. Sometimes that is plastic. And for the time being during this health crisis, I think health is a precedent. So we need to make sure that whatever plastic we are collecting, we are responsibly recycling. Um, and so we've even thought about our own recycling and we wanna change what we're doing. We wanna have more dedicated bins and we found a recycling center near our office that, we can, that will actually take care of that. So that is one way, but yes, there will be a lot of, you know, you, that's the part that's, that's painful for me a little bit is like, you know, all these wipes and Clorox wipes and all these mm -hmm. things, garbage that we're making, masks. It's a, it's, it's a lot of trash, mm -hmm. but I, at this point in time, I think we have to do our best in terms of recycling that, but we're gonna need to use a lot of stuff until this health crisis is over. Totally. And then one thing that we might have already touched upon, but a few people wanted clarity about providing um, PPE to um, people on set. Um, is that something that producers are going to be responsible for providing? Or is that something where you're going to ask um, cast and crew to bring your own I, you know, I, I think that there's, there's going to be a range of responses to that. I think um, in a production company type of environment, like what we do, we're going to have all of that available at our check-in station. We want to make sure that it's not just one single mask or bandana that somebody's bringing that they can't change throughout the day because that's not really um, a healthy way of doing it. So we will provide those, but um, I don't, uh, you know, I, I don't see it as a mandate. I think it's just however you want to approach it and and uh, smaller crews you might ask your teams if you can't if you don't have the budget to provide those things you might ask your team hey do you have uh masks that you could change out you know what what can you bring but certain items i think you know like gloves and things i mean i i'm finding boxes of, of gloves very cheap for like 500 of them you know so I think that um, if a photographer is working a lot, there, there's a small investment you can make, but that is, investment is an investment in your in your continuing to work. So, and again, clients gonna... might look at that and be like, "Oh, they got it together. Okay, I feel safe going there, hiring that person." Totally. Yeah, the one the the first client that doesn't feel safe on, on a set with a crew, they're going to jump to the next. Okay, who's the next one? How are they? That doing? could be you job know? risky. Yeah, very job risky. And that actually goes into another uh, question slash comment. Um, okay, but we gotta hurry here. Gotta... With, with regards okay. to just accountability, like who's gonna be holding clients accountable? Like how, like, yes, in a perfect world, like they're gonna have really great intentions and want everyone to be on set, but like with these squeezing budgets and with um, like, are they gonna really prioritize the safety of people? Well, I think, I, you know, I think that's something that's up to us. We have to decide as humans what our values are. You're an artist. And why did you become an artist? What does that mean to you? Where, where, where in your heart and in your being did you decide that image making was the thing that drove your passion? That's really connected to the heart. And I think that in there, um, we have to just say, you know what? I, I want to align with people that share that. You know, that's, that's the better world we're going to live in. And um, we and have I, to move I agree that with way. What, what you were saying, Michael, about right now is the time. You know, this is what brands are showing right now in their ads. Everybody right. is a bit more human, as I was saying, more heartfelt, more. This is the time for us to that now take it further that way. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I've had I've had big art producers from major agencies talk with me about what they want, and it's and the way they want to improve, you know, even prior to this, like I was saying on an eco level, sending me, you know, 18 pages of, of, of dialogue about how we want this type of thing on set. So yeah, there, there will be some that don't for sure, but trust me, those are not career, that's not where you're going to build a career. You want to align with people that really share those, those values and care about you as well. I mean, your, your safety is important too. So you should put yourself yeah. in an environment you want to be in. Totally. And your artists, photographers are artists. artists. That means a lot to me. I feel like I keep, I could take many tangents, but I gotta wrap this up. So one, one quick question for us three is, what is something we are all looking forward to doing again when we go back to our new normal? 
and I can mm. start because mine's okay. kind of, I'm not proud of it, but it's going back to the gym where I get to just shut off the work for, for an hour or two. And I get to listen to my baseball fantasy baseball podcasts. Like that's my time. And I miss, <laughs> I miss going there and doing that. Totally. So anything, yeah. yeah. I, I miss I, my friends, you know, just seeing friends and having dinners and, and, so all those beautiful faces. I just the the Zoom is great, and thank God for it, really. But, but you know, it's just not the same. It is not the same. So I'm yeah. looking forward to that, and I'm looking forward to that life. I, I, that's a really great time. That's why I got into this business. Yeah. Not, you know, I got into this business because I love being on set. That's a really happy place for me. So I, I want to get back there soon. Community. Yeah. Community. Yeah. I just want to see my family and give them a hug. Oh, and swim oh. in their pool. <laughs> you two sound like better people than me. I just got to say. All right. Um, so we're out of time. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank for you. Doing this. Thank you for having us. Andrea. This is huge. Heartfelt. This is what we got to do right now is get together and offer this information. So right. um, next week we will have two guests joining us, a creative director and an art producer. And we'll continue the conversation about the new direction new mood and approach to advertising and what it's going to look like like where is advertising going and what can we expect and how to oh it's great dip our feet in there to make our portfolios match what to expect um so let me know if there's any other topics you want covered let me know on ask stern rep and see you next next time hannah okay. yeah thank you Thank you so much, both of you. This was this was awesome. I learned a lot, and I hope everyone else did as well. Um, you know, we're all about advocating for community and um, building community here at APA. So this is you know moments like these where we can inspire and motivate each other to keep working during a time like this is you know what and we're together. all about. And yeah. together, you're doing it together. Absolutely. APA formed by photographers, two photographers. Mm -hmm so important yeah and one last shout out to sammy's sammy's um is one of our big sponsors and it's because of them that we can do stuff like this which is great so thank you um sammy's. thank you sammy's and as much as you can support sammy's and just Michael, one, one quick really quickly i just want to remind everybody that uh tomorrow uh on the apa site uh patty will have the full document of set health protocol and if anybody has any ideas or thinks of something that we uh, we should add or, or need to think about where this is a work in progress. So we really welcome any input. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.